unlike your everyday road car, which relies on ABS or anti-lock braking system and vacuum-assisted brake boosters to keep you safe and smooth. An F1 car has no brake boosters, no servos, no vacuum pumps, just a direct line from your leg to four tires fighting for grip. It's all hydraulic, and this gives you a raw feedback. All day is leg day. Now, try to imagine hitting the brakes at 300 km per hour and knowing there's no safety net, no electronic guardian angel, just your foot, your instinct, and a car driving on the edge of physics. This is Formula One, where ABS isn't just missing, it's banned. Mind you, this is not the only thing that's banned there. There's so many others, and wait till the end because we've got something spicy just for you. So, did you know why there's no ABS? Well, the FIA banned ABS in 1994 alongside traction control, launch control, and active suspension. The reason? To keep the challenge as human as possible. It's not the plane, it's the pilot, as they said in the movie Top Gun. It's not the plane, it's the pilot. In Formula One, it's not the tech, it's the driver. In a sport where a tenth of a second can separate glory from heartbreak, the responsibility must lie entirely in the driver's hands. Not the code. ABS prevents the wheels from locking under hard braking. It's a safety feature in road cars, but in F1, locking up is part of the risk. It ruins tires, ruins lap times, and if you're not careful, ruins races. But knowing where the limit is, how far you can push before you cross it, is part of the craft. And reliability matters. Fewer systems mean fewer points of failure. A brake booster failure on your daily driving means calling roadside assistance. But in F1, it means slamming into a wall at 200 plus kilometers per hour. But most of all, it's about feel. F1 drivers want unfiltered, uncompromising feedback through the brake pedal. They want to feel the grip the moment the tire starts to complain. The shift in balance as the weight transfers forward. Any assist system would dull that connection and dull the edge of their driving. Without ABS, F1 drivers rely on a technique called threshold braking, applying the maximum brake force possible without locking the tires. It's a constant dance, modulating pressure, adjusting brake bias corner by corner, adapting to tire wear, fuel load, and even wind. One moment too greedy and the front tires lock. That means smoke, vibrations, flat spots, and lost performance. Get it right? You stop later, carry more speed, and open the door to overtaking or defending. Braking in F1 isn't just about slowing down, it's about setting up the entire corner and the lap that follows. We've all seen the drama. A car dives into the braking zone, the front wheel smoke, and the driver skates wide. But the real artistry? It's the micro-corrections, the recoveries you don't even notice. Nico Rosberg once described it like solving math equations at 300 km per hour. Adjusting brake balance, playing with the engine braking, using every tool to prevent that dreaded lockup, especially when wheel-to-wheel -wheel with someone like Hamilton. But even the best get it wrong. Lewis Hamilton's mistake in Baku 2021 became instant legend. A missed switch setting brake magic, and he locked up into turn one on the race restart. From win to P15 in one move. No ABS to save him. Sebastian Vettel, Canada 2019, defending from Hamilton. He pushed just a little too hard into turn three, lost to the rear, and rejoined the track with a twitch. That single braking miscalculation cost him the win and sparked one of the most controversial penalties of the modern era. You either die your hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. A bit dramatic, maybe, but in moments like these, the line is razor thin. If there's one place where F1 drivers turn into legends, it's under braking. Late, hard, and precise. This is where courage meets calculation. Some drivers just see the limit differently. They don't just brake later, they brake smarter. Take Daniel Ricciardo, for example. At his peak, especially during his Red Bull years, he was widely regarded as the best late breaker on the grid. 
his dive bombs into turn 1 at Monza, or the hairpin in Baku became signature moves. The 2018 Chinese Grand Prix is textbook Ricardo. Six overtakes in 20 laps, each one launched from what seemed like an impossible distance. But it wasn't reckless, it was clinical. Controlled chaos, delivered through the brake pedal. Then there's Max Verstappen, whose style is more aggressive, raw, instinctive. He trusts the car, trusts his feel, and sends it. Mexico 2019, he launched it from two car lengths back into turn one, threading a needle that wasn't even open. Max doesn't wait for the door to open, he kicks it down. And let's not forget Ayrton Senna, who mastered the art of tail braking long before telemetry could prove it. His 1988 Monaco pole lap is still talked about for good reason. He carried speed into corners that didn't seem to allow it. It wasn't just about bravery, it was about feel, timing, and complete harmony with the car. Even today, Charles Leclerc shows flashes of this kind of brilliance. His pole lap at Singapore 2022, his dive into the Monza chicane, or Spa's final chicane. Charles Leclerc has coped brilliantly! He won in Spa! All examples of that sharp, reactive braking style. Aggressive, yet smooth. Deliberate, not desperate. Different drivers, different eras, different techniques. But all of them united by one thing. Total mastery of the most brutal skill in Formula 1. Braking not just to slow down, but to make the car dance on a knife's edge. Monza's Turn 1, the famous Variante del Redifilo, is the ultimate test of nerve. It's the fastest braking zone in Formula 1. Drivers scream down the main straight at over 340 km per hour and hit the brakes just past the 100 meter board, decelerating with over 5G of force into a tight, awkward chicane. There's no easing into it. You either nail the braking point or you're flying over the sausage curbs, skating through the runoff or punting someone into turn two. The margin of error measured in inches. Then there's Baku's turn eight hairpin. Deceptively simple on paper, but in reality, a corner that punishes even the smallest miscalculation. The approach is narrow, the walls are unforgiving, and the grip inconsistent at best. It's a braking zone that rewards instinct and punishes hesitation. This is Ricciardo territory. Down the inside goes Daniel Ricciardo! What a move! place for dive bombs from way back, but you have to be perfect. Miss your mark by a foot and you're blocking the apex, taking damage or worse, facing the wall head on with nowhere to go. Canada's Turn 10, known as the Lipanlia Hairpin, is one of the slowest corners on the calendar. But don't be fooled, it's also one of the most dangerous braking zones. Arriving at speed from the back straight, the track narrows, the surface changes, and cold tires bite. Brake too early and you invite a lunch from behind. Brake too late and you're heading straight for the wall of champions at the exit. It's a corner that remembers mistakes and names. And then there's Spa Francorcham bus stop chicane. A corner with old school character and modern pressure. Approaching at the end of the longest full throttle section on the track, drivers slam the brakes from over 300 km per hour down to second gear in less than 3 seconds. It's tight, bumpy, and always evolving. In the wet, it becomes a lottery. In qualifying, it's make or break. Get it right and you carry momentum onto the start-finish trait. Get it wrong and you compromise not just the lap, sometimes the whole race. In these corners, bravery alone isn't enough. You need judgment, feel, and a sixth sense for where the grip lives. Because in Formula 1, braking isn't just about slowing down. It's where the bold take their shot. There's been debate over the years. Should Formula 1 bring ABS back? Should it embrace the same systems that make high-end road cars safer, easier to drive, and harder to mess up? But in F1, the answer is still no. And it's not just about tradition. Formula 1 isn't here to make things comfortable. It's here to test the edge of human skill, where instinct, training, and judgment outweigh algorithms. This is a driver's championship, people, not a software showcase. Keeping ABS out of the equation means that the responsibility stays fully with the person behind the wheel. It's their job to feel the grip, modulate the pedal, and know, without assistance, exactly how far they can push before it all goes wrong. 
And let's be clear, this doesn't mean the cars are basic. F1 braking systems are cutting edge, built with some of the most advanced materials and engineering on the planet. Carbon carbon brake discs that work best at over a thousand degrees Celsius, calipers milled from aerospace grade aluminum, rare brake by wire systems that not only stop the car but also recharge the hybrid unit, all while maintaining perfect balance, cooling ducts designed through computational fluid dynamics, custom brake pedal setups tailored to each driver's exact feel. Teams spend hours just tuning the brake bias and pressure maps for each corner of each track. It's technical mastery, but without automation. So no, Formula One doesn't need ABS. In fact, it's better without it. Because here, it's not about making the car do the work. It's about proving the driver can. F1 isn't about comfort, it's about control. No ABS, no shortcuts, just raw talent and fearless precision. So the next time you see a lockup, a dive bomb or a perfectly timed save, remember, it's all the driver. No tech, no tricks, just pure, beautiful, brutal skill. If you enjoyed the deep dive, hit like, drop a comment telling us your favorite breaking moment in F1 history, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos of the breakdown what makes these drivers superhuman.